Hi everyone, it's Monday, it's seven o'clock, and this is the first ever episode of Art School Live. Art it, School, it's Art School, it's like normal school, but more arty, cause it's Art School. Hello and welcome. So today's show is going to be all about censorship and freedom of expression in art. So how this works is, if you want to hit the comments below, any questions you've got as the episode goes on, I'm going to try my best to answer them. Today on the show, we're going to be doing the art world's top rotters. We're going to talk about the five most censored, most shocking artworks in history. And I'm going to be sharing some other kind of hints and tips. And I've got a very, very special surprise guest for you later on the show. So censorship has been going on since art began mostly for political and religious reasons. People who express themselves, made cool stuff, have faced persecution for a very, very long time. Now, you're probably all aware of Michelangelo's bit of the Sistine Chapel, which was called The Last Judgment. It's a great work of art. I think everybody kind of agrees with that. Um, but it was originally painted without any loincloths. Now, the interesting thing about this piece is that after the work was completed, and actually, after Michelangelo died, the Council of Trent decided that religious art should have absolutely no nudity whatsoever. So in 1565, a year after he died, they went back and Danielle della Volterra was actually employed to paint loincloths over all those amazing Michelangelo paintings. Painted it all over the Willy Wonkers. Now this one, this is quite interesting. This is Gustave Courbet's Origins of the World. And we can't actually show you this on Facebook because although Facebook claims that artistic nudes are now totally acceptable, it actually appears that if you post this picture, not only will it be deleted, but your account will be suspended too. So who's brave enough to try it out? Write in, let me know what happens. But the question is, the real question is about this, is actually what's so alarming about a naked, nude, female painting. I mean, if you think about it, everything started here, didn't it? We all hatched out of something like this. Every idea, every piece of creativity started somewhere. And it seems totally right to me that an artist should be expressing themselves in these kind of ways. And I wonder why Facebook find it so shocking all those years afterwards. Another interesting piece, though, is this one. This is Scott Tyler's 1988 work, um, it, what, it's called, What Was the Proper Way to Display the American Flag? And what Scott Tyler did with this one is he actually put the flag on the floor and there's a small little painting on the wall of the gallery, a little picture, and you actually had to climb on this flag to get up close and personal to the painting. And that meant that the viewer actually had to tread on the flag. And that was an absolute big no, no, absolutely not. And the ever-lovely President Bush declared it disgraceful. And the whole of Congress actually denounced the work, as what they'd done is they'd just passed uh, legislation to protect the flag. So Scott's, poor Scott's work got pulled, and the exhibition was cancelled, and that was terrible. Now this one, I found this one, you won't believe this, this is absolutely bananas. This is Holboin's pan, and apparently, according to Facebook, through human error, this uh, hand was banned for 30 days because it's offensive. And we, we asked them, but they were completely unable to give any kind of explanation as to why this was uh, actually offensive. So, oh, hang on a second. Sorry, can someone get the door? Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, um, so there was no um, explanation as to kind of why it was offensive. And of course, when we're thinking about um, expression, human rights. That can, sorry, can you answer the door, please? Can you get it? Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, um, human rights. So we have a Human Rights Act, and under Article 10 of the Human Rights Act, we have a right to freedom of expression. And that's crucial, really, in a democracy, because that means that um, we can share information and ideas, and we can inform kind of political debate. So freedom of expression is vital, and we're protected under... Sorry. Oh, let's see. Do you want to come now? No, they can't come no, now. No, they want to come now. You can come to them later, Linda, I think. Come now. That's all right. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. 
Sorry. Um, yeah, freedom of expression is really, really important. I mean, if artists can't express themselves and share their point of view, then a political system could run complete amok. And it means that there's some kind of accountability, transparency in government, and that is really, really vital. So, in my opinion, everyone has a right to that kind of thing. Um, Liam, can you, can you hit the art and fart? Art or fart? Art or fart? Okay, so this is the bit of the show where we ask you guys to help us work out which of these artworks is art and which of these artworks is actually fart. So the first piece we have is this one here. It's a blue square. Actually, it's a blue rectangle. And it was painted in 1975 by a young man and exhibited in Paris. It was quite controversial at the time. So if you hit the comments, let me know. Is this artwork a real... Hi, Holly. It's good for you to join us. So, Holly, do you think this... Here's a question for you. Do you think this is real art or is it... <laughs> complete and utter fart? Um, I'll let you know in a minute. It'd be interesting to know what you guys think. Is the blue rectangle art or fart? Next up, we've got this. Now, this is an oil painting of a sheet of paper. It's made by a female artist. It's made very recently. Is this a real work of art? Or is it nothing but a big load of fart? So you decide. And finally, the last piece is this one. Let's take a look at this. So this is a black canvas painted in the 50s by a bloke, is it art or is it fart? So let's find out. What do you reckon? Is the blue one art or fart? Oh, Katie, you think the black one's art? Layla, you like your street art? Okay, we might have a special treat for you later. The street of papers art? Okay. It, who's ready to find out? Is it time for me to reveal this? Which ones are art and which ones are fart? Okay, so the majority of people thought the blue one was... Art? Fart! You're right! <laughs> it's nothing but a load of fart. We just downloaded it off the internet. It's just a blue rectangle. It has nothing to do with art at all. Uh, well done. Next up, the black one. What did you guys think of this? The most of you thought it was... They've seen it in the Tate. OK, and you think it's art? You're absolutely right. It's a Mark Rothko. It's a black square by Mark Rothko. He made a series of black paintings. They're fantastic. You can't reproduce it. So there you go. It's a Rothko. It was real art. Can you take that one out, Wawa? Thank you. OK. So this one, the... Uh, Screwed up bit of paper, painted in oil paints. How do we feel about that? Is it art or is it fart? It's fart? Is it art? It's fart! Okay, so you like that one, Stacey. You like it. Maybe you should paint something like that. It would be good. Okay, Natasha, you're absolutely... Sort of right. I mean, to me, it's art. I quite like it. Anyway, uh, thanks, Imran. Okay. Oh, my gosh! There's somebody at the door. There's somebody at the door. There's somebody at the door. It's got to be someone good because there's somebody at the door. Shall I go see who it is? Who's at the door? Who's at the door? Who do you think it is? The special guest. Hang on. Let's see who it is. Oh, my gosh! Come on in. You're not going to believe this. Come on in, Rob. Easy, Rob. Easy, Rob. Easy, Rob. <laughs> Easy, Rob. This is Rob, um, old friend of mine, and uh, he's popped in. Uh, thank you, Rob. Shall I put this over here? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Um, so Rob is a, a um, well-known street artist. 
a graffiti. Is it fair to call you a street artist or are you more of a public artist, Rob? Um, I'm just an artist, please. Just Thank an artist. You. Okay, Rob's just an artist. But he's made some seminal pieces of work all over the world. You've probably seen his stuff all over the streets, but you've probably also seen it in some quite big museums and galleries. Rob, I was wondering how you feel about helping me over here decorate my fairy garden. Well, yeah, it's one of my strong points, actually. Uh, yeah, do you want to do you want to put this down, Rob? Because I don't want to get in trouble. Tools. Yeah, we don't need your tools, Rob. Oh. Do you, you want to put your gloves on? Gloves, yeah. Now, I've prepared a few questions for you because, I mean, obviously, you've been you've been all over the streets, Rob. You're quite iconic in your own right. Yeah. And iconic. um, you know, I was just sort of wondering how you felt about that transition of going into a more commercial arena do you know what i mean selling your work in galleries and that kind of thing um not for me really i think i'll stick with the proclaimers um i quite enjoyed my trip to jerusalem though oh you've been over to jerusalem have yeah. you what were you doing there i was uh sort of on tour with the proclaimers do you want something from your bag for the fairy garden yes please could you just hold these a minute? yeah i'll hold those for you rob i've got something in here hang on you've got something in there what yeah, is it on. what have you got Oh, did I tell you I'm working in oils now? <laughs> oh, you're working in oils, I see, WD-40. Hang on. Um, oh, thanks, Rob. That, that looks a bit dangerous. What's this? Oh, it's for your shrine. Oh, for my shrine! Oh, yeah. Rob, mate, thank you. That's so lovely. I'm going to walk over to the shrine and put it down, put it down with the other bits and bobs. Thank you, Rob. That's lovely. I'll pop it over there and it will look absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be using that. Okay, Rob, so let's get on with this fairy garden, shall we? And I've got a few questions for you. So, do you visit the West Country very much? West Country? Um, yeah, now and then, although I've just actually travelled from Glasgow. Oh, have you? Yeah. Um, have you ever started a five-man army? No, but I did go and see the Pipers Convention in Glasgow. <laughs> okay. Uh, four years. Uh, do you ever feel the need to um, pray for rain, Rob? No, it's uh, doing all right on its own, mate. Is it? Okay. Um, have you ever gone out for a bit of a mezzanine? Um, no, I, I went to Pizza Hut the other day. Oh, yeah, did you? So, look, this fairy garden's coming on lovely, isn't it, Rob? Do you like that? That's a nice tree there. That is nice. Have you done much gardening? Well, funny you should say that. Um, all these gardening programmes yeah. and magazines you can get never say... When you've done a fairy garden, put it in the microwave. Don't work. Never put it in the microwave. Never put it in the microwave. Top, top tip. So top tip from Rob. If you're making a fairy garden, do not put it in the microwave. Okay, Rob. Um, that looks absolutely marvellous. Shall I plug? How about that? Should we get that there? That's nice. Um, should we get a little bit of water, Rob? <laughs> you didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> thanks, Rob. It was great having you on. Did um, I pray thanks. For rain? Huh? Did I pray for no, rain? you didn't pray for rain, but you oh, got it anyway. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for visiting us. It's we'll see you soon. Actually, pleasure. I'll show you out. Exit through the gift shop. Yeah, exit through the gift shop. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> see you later. Easy as you go, Rob. Yeah. Easy as you go. Thanks, Rob. Everyone, say goodbye to Rob. Bye, Rob. Bye, Rob. Rob is amazing. Now, the problem is not every... What a lovely bloke, by the way. I mean, what a top, straight-up bloke. Absolutely amazing. But sadly, not everyone in the art world is as lovely as Rob. The art world is full of smelly rotters. So in the next part of the show, and over the rest of the season, we're actually going to take a look at the top art world rotters. This is... The smelly rotters. They're smelly and they're rotten. They're the smelly rotters. Okay, so there we go. We're ready for the smelly rotters. Now let me introduce you to this. This is our smelly rotter leaderboard. And over the show, we're going to be adding different artists to this leaderboard. And uh, the first one that we're going to take a look at is this bloke, which is called Benvenuto Cellini. And this guy was re killing repeatedly. He showed absolutely no remorse at all. This bloke did not care. He stabbed his brother's murderer to death with a long twisted dagger straight through the heart. And this could probably have been explained and he might have got away with it, but it wasn't a one-off. He also went and killed um, someone else, which was his 
um, brother-in-law, I think. Um, so, um, yeah. So where do you think he should go? He's a dirty, rotten person. He actually escaped being executed because he was so admired as an artist. So basically, if you're admired as an artist, you escape the chop. So guys, I want you to tell me where he should go on the smelly rotters. Near the top, somewhere in the middle, way at the bottom. I'm going to leave him in the middle for now, but let's see who else I've got to think about. The next person is this guy, and he is Richard Dad. At first, they thought this Victorian artist was experiencing sunstroke as he was touring around Europe. He had a sudden change of personality. He got increasingly violent. When he came back to England, he stabbed his dad to death, and he spent the rest of his life in prisons and mental institutions. So it wasn't a very good old run for Richard Dad. Anyway, um, he did paint some fantastic works, Fairy Realm, Fairy Kingdom, they're absolutely beautiful. You should check them out. But sadly, he died in Broadmoor. Where do you think we should put him? Do you think he's more of a rotter than our Italian dude or less of a rotter? I'll put him below. I'll put him below then. Katie, what do you want to see? You want to see Anish? You want to see Anish? You really want to see Anish? Okay. The third rotter is nobody else but Anish Kapoor. Now, for those of you that don't know, this bloke is a one-man flipping nightmare. First of all, he got paid millions of pounds to junk, drop a giant shiny bean in the middle of a park in Chicago. And then he signed a deal which meant that other artists, in fact, the public, couldn't take any photos in the public park anymore in case it got a reflection in it. So that you're down there in the park, it's your son's first time on his new bike, and you can't take a photo of him in case you get Kapoor's sculpture in the background. Then what he goes and does is he tries and sues China, yes, the whole country of China, for making a sculpture a bit like his. Then he uses all his money and all his power to buy up the rights to the blackest black paint in the whole world, which means no other artist can use the paint apart from Kapoor which is just really mean and evil. So I actually made some pink paint, which I shared with everybody, and I banned him from using it. He illegally got that, and then he dipped his middle finger in it and put it on his Instagram, telling us all up yours. And then most recently, he's got no planning permission for it, but he's trying to build a giant extension on top of his house. You say boo, but yeah, boo! Totally, Sharon, it is a boo. And he's building this massive thing on the roof of his house, which is gonna block all the light and color from his neighbors. So that's not very good. So where do you think we should put Kapoor on the smelly rotters for? Right at the top. I'll call it a bean again. Shall I pop it there? He hates it being called a bean. You're totally right. The boo, the mean bean man. Okay, so for now, Anish is at the top of our rotters leaderboard. Let's see how it pans out over the next episodes of Art School Live. But at the moment, I'm sorry, Kapoor, you are the smelliest of rotters. Now we're going to take a look at the five most controversial and censored artists and artworks of all time. Can you roll the video? So, please, please? the top five most controversial and censored artworks of all time. In at number five is Piss Christ by the American artist and photographer Andreas Serrano. It depicts a small plastic crucifix submerged in a glass tank and inside the glass tank is the artist's urine. Now at the time religious groups and some lawmakers called for President Obama to denounce the artwork and they compared it to anti-Islamic film Innocence of Muslims that the White House had condemned earlier that month. A copy of the work was vandalised beyond repair when an upset Christian took a hammer to the work when it was on show in France. Next up at number four is one of my favourite painters of all time and everyone should get off his case and let him make whatever he wants because Chris Affili is absolutely brilliant. I remember seeing this piece, The Holy Virgin Mary, which he made in 96 and exhibited in 97 as part of his sensation show in London and it was an incredible painting and it really inspired me and actually it was the least controversial thing in the show. There were much more controversial things. Anyway, when the show was to tour to New York, it was Mayor Giuliani who took massive offence 
at Chris using elephant dung on the Virgin Mary's breasts and propping the painting up on elephant dung. And in the detail, there were some quite hardcore pornographic images. I think it's a top painting. Now, at number three, we have the piece Ark, which was made in 1981 by sculptor Richard Serra. Unfortunately, the council decided that uh, it just got in the way and it was really annoying, so they took it down. I think that's an absolutely ludicrous reason to get rid of a fantastic piece of contemporary art. At number two, we have Exhibit B which is an art show which used black actors as live models and it told the stories of African slaves, human zoo specimens and asylum seekers. Sadly it was cancelled by London's Barbican because there were protests, some people saw it as racist or offensive, but the performance art piece was actually created by Brett Bailey who was a white South African director. It had been seen by 25,000 people in other cities before it got to London and to their defence the Barbican did stand up for the artist in the media and they were really disappointed not to bring the show. However, they still cancelled it. And at number one, it has to be Pussy Riot. Now this is the biggest travesty, in my opinion, for freedom of expression and creativity. These young women took to Moscow's Cathedral of Christ the Saviour in 2012 to perform a post-punk rock song dressed in brightly coloured knitted balaclavas. It was quickly broken up because the song criticised the Putin election campaign. It was broken up by security. Two of them were arrested and charged with hooliganism and later a third member, Yakaterina, was arrested. They were denied bail and they were held in custody until their trial began in late July and they were not held in very good conditions. The eyes of the world media fell on them, pressure was put on them and an appeal was granted. One of them, Yakaterina, she was granted bail but the other two had to face the full two years imprisonment. And that was absolutely awful for people expressing how they feel in an artistic and creative way. So in honor of the amazing Pussy Riot, let's watch a bit of Pussy Riot. They were my five most controversial and most censored artworks of all time. <laughs> Hi everyone and thank you. It's just so good to be here with you and to finally be doing this and to be able to connect and everything in this way. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, can you please keep your questions coming in for me though? If there's anything you'd like to ask, something that's on your mind about your own work, anything like that, I'd love to try and answer it during this show. So please do that. This is the part of the show where we take a look at some questions and some work that's been sent in to the email address artschool at stuartsemple.com over the past week. It's time for The Crit. It's time for The Crit! Okay, so the first question comes from JD. And JD writes, I have a problem with overpainting, I guess. Like, have you ever painted something and thought, crap, I should have stopped a layer ago? Any tips on saving a painting or just knowing when to stop? Um, yeah, um, we all do it. J uh, JD, we all do it. We, we all overwork work. And, it, you know, there's the number of paintings I've lost by overdoing it, I can't tell you. But I remember a really good art teacher of mine at college told me that painting was a bit like baking bread and that you can build it up and let it rise and then knock it down again. And sometimes um, not every painting is a successful one and you just kind of have to take it on the chin. I mean, knowing when to stop is a hard thing. Um, but the more stuff you make the more you will make things that stop at the right place. And personally in my work, I've been enjoying leaving things a little bit more undercooked and some layers less explored. So sometimes less really, really is more. The next question is from Francois. 
And Francois has written with a very technical painty question, which I really like. Um, Francois says he's currently struggling with the method of solid colour application. He wants to do solid, no brush strokes type of application. Nothing he's tried is working. He gessoes his canvases to the smoothest possible finish. He uses soft body Liquitex acrylics. But even when adding flow age, results still carry the brush strokes. Transparent pigments don't do it for him. And he's wondering if I could tell him what method I use to get things really flat. Yeah, um, a good quality synthetic brush really, really helps, Francois. And I use the Pro Arte ones, the Sterling ones. They're silver. They're really, really, really good brushes. So they help. The other thing is the type of acrylic you use. I've used the Liquitex a lot, and the Flow Medium does help. Um, not to be cheesy or like plug anything, but I've invented my own super flat um, acrylics called Potion, and you can get those from Culture Hustle. They do go on really, really flat, but it's practice. It's spreading it out nicely and evenly. And the other thing that I do that really helps mine is I add, um, I actually use the Liquitex matte varnish, and I give it a layer afterwards of the Liquitex, and that flattens it out and stops it reflecting too much light, and that might really, really help you. But um, those transparent pigments, they're never going to do the flat thing. You need really opaque paint. So read the Liquitex labels because they tell you how opaque they are. You need the most opaque acrylics you can get and you need to really spread them out. hope that helps. Um, last up, Lucy, you're a makeup artist and you've said that you feel that your ideas are different from your classmates when you look around. They don't like it because it's not trendy or traditional. Perhaps the design elements are missing from it. Your teachers are constantly saying that they can't teach art. What are your thoughts? No, you can't teach art. Art's something that you practice and you explore and it takes time to find your own voice in what you make. And you only find that voice by doing it. And your teachers can't te teach you how to find yourself in your work, but they can provide a supportive environment for you to do it. And I hope that's what they're doing. As far as what your classmates think, who cares whether they like you or not? I mean, it's good to be different. That's the whole point. I mean, the more different you are, the better it will be when you graduate. So be yourself. I mean, it's simple, it's cheesy, but that's what you need to do. So thank you to uh, Lucy, JD and Francois for the questions. We'll get in touch with you and send you some Culture Hustle vouchers so you can check out some paints yourself. Um, next up, it's time for the last part of the show, which is called Brilliant or Bananas. Brilliant or bananas, bananas or brilliant, brilliant or bananas. Okay, guys, I want you to tell me whether you think this is brilliant or bananas. Now, uh, artist Pieter Pawlensky went and nailed his scrotum to the cobblestones of Moscow's Red Square. And he said about that, and I'm going to have to read it from a card because it's quite, quite a thing. The performance can be seen as a metaphor for the apathy, political indifference and fatalism of contemporary Russian society. Palvensky said in a statement, as the government turns the country into one big prison, stealing from people and using the money to grow and enrich the police apparatus and other repressive structures, society is allowing this and forgetting its numerical advantage. It's bringing the triumph of the police state closer to its inaction. Now, I don't really understand why going and stapling your bow sack to the pavement makes a statement about that. To me, it's pretty bananas. But I'm interested to know what you guys think. Uh, Sharon, you think it's bananas? I agree with you. Who else thinks it's bananas? Nuts, OK. Um, so who else thinks it's bananas? Or, or is it brilliant? Is it brilliant or is it bananas? What do you reckon? Katie, yeah, uh, I'm with you. OK, let's have a look at the barometer and see. It's bananas! It's bananas. obviously bananas! Oh, God, not bananas. Oh, God, it's a... Oh, my God. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, it's quite obviously a complete and utter... Thank you. Um, bananas. So we were all right. Um, now, let's talk about some homework. So you guys don't get off that easily. Arts, you wouldn't be in art school without homework. And what I want you to do is over the next week, make some stuff for us all to look at together. I think that'd be really nice. So we've been talking about sense dip. We've been talking about freedom of expression. So can you go out and make something quite controversial? Maybe it's religious. Maybe it's sexual. 
Maybe it's challenging in some way. And can you email it to me, artschool at stuartsemple.com, and ask me any questions that you have while you are making this piece. And then I'll answer them on next week's show. And if they get put in, it is a good job he didn't staple his banana, Sharon, yeah. Um, but anyway, look, email me your work and any questions about it. And if you get featured, we'll send out a bucket load of Culture Hustle vouchers so you can make cool art stuff. So that's the homework. Thank you very much. That almost takes us up to the end of the show. I'm going to do a really quick Q&A to answer any questions that we've got. We've got about 60 minutes left. I'm going to do my best to answer them. Have we got the questions? OK, 60 seconds. Here we go. And I'm going to answer them. What's my favourite medium to work in? Charcoal. Lydia in Chicago. Next week, uh, she wants to see the bean. OK, I'll sort it out. Do witches eat children? What a ridiculous question. Of course they do. Cherie is using photos of famous people in art. Is it breaching copyright? Oh, I don't know. Just do it anyway. You'll probably get away with it. I didn't say that. Um, yes, it probably is. You might have to ask their permission. Do you want to make art every day? I, yeah, I do. I make some kind of art every day. Is this a piece of art? I think so. Um, my, my time's up. I'm sorry I didn't get to you all. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me on Art School. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye. Art School. It's art school. It's like normal school, but more arty. Cause it's... Art school!